Hey boys, welcome back to some more NRL Supercoach. It's going to be the round eight preview discussion. We're going to go through some potential trade options. I'll go through again sort of what I'm doing. Uh, we'll talk about uh, we'll talk about captaincies, talk about who to who to sit and start, all the all the usual suspects. But um, but yeah, let's uh, let's sort of run through. I guess uh, I'll run through briefly. Again, I know I know I've been doing this a bit, but uh, we'll go we'll go through sort of future plans as to what I'm looking at for each position. Uh, starting with the dummy halves. Now the dummy halves are a, <laughs> they're a tricky one. So Harry Grant, I mean I'm definitely not selling Grant before like round 13. Am I gonna sell Harry Grant over the buy period? Um, I I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. I just. <laughs> I just don't think there's going to be really any dummy half that warrants selection for the buys because if we look, I'll, I'll quickly, let's have a quick gander at round 13. So, Dolphins, Dragons. Dragons, no. I mean, there's little in M buy. Dolphins, I mean, Jeremy Marshall King has actually been killing it. Um, I guess he would be potentially the best. Parramatta, you got Hodgson and hands there both not great options cowboys robson robson is also a good option i don't uh, i i wouldn't think he I, I don't think he's been playing good enough to even sort of have a look in at selection this year for new south wales i know last year he was pretty you know i i don't think he would have really got that close to cook last year either but at least he, he was in discussions i mean this year he's been okay but definitely not I mean, the Cowboys in general haven't been there. Broncos, no one there. Warriors, I mean, Wade Egan. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I think Wade Egan would have been a good hold for round 13. But at the end of the day, we needed to bring in Hines. And uh, that was the smart decision. I don't think I'm going to be bringing back Wade Egan. Uh, South, obviously, no Cook will be there. Canberra. It'll be, you know, there's no one really there. Newcastle, again, it's, all of the fucking, all the teams playing in this first buy are like, there's two dummy halves. Like, there's barely, I mean, Jerry Marshall King and Hodge, uh, Robertson are like the two guys. And even Manly, I mean, Lachlan Croker, I guess, or potentially that's um, Champ, <laughs> the young guy there who looks outstanding. He looks so good in the trials, but I don't think he's in the top 30. Maybe he'll... Um, gets uh, into the top 30 by round 13. I'm not exactly sure how that works. Again, I think after a certain time, they can they can come in or something. Um, maybe a cheapie like that comes in, but I mean, yeah, there's not really any dummy halves. Um, so, I, I don't know. I'm not too sure. Tanner Boyd, again. So, Tanner Boyd, let's have a look. Because um, again, I just... I, I, I think Tanner Boyd's just going to be a nice solid hold for uh, to be like the backup dummy half for a while now. Because again, we'll look at the top dummy half. So Harry Grant, we got Damian Cook. He'll play Origin, but also he's just he's been plotting. Like he, even I don't know Damian Cook. I feel like he's had some attacking stats thrown in, um, but he's just not getting any upside scores. Like I, I'm curious to see what his highest score. I reckon it's only going to be like 70. His highest score. Um, yeah, 73. I mean, he's had a couple of okay, like 68, 58, 58, 68. He's been very solid. He's been very, very solid, but there's just been no upside in, in Cook, which is which is crazy. Um, Reed Marnie, a 33. You love to see it. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I, I'm loving to see Reed Marnie fucking shit the bed after a lot of people brought him in because, I mean, I'm, I'm salty about last year. He, he, he killed me last year, so I'm happy to see him absolutely... <laughs> absolutely shit it uh after people got him in because yeah it was sort of out of him and egan because i mean he started on fire 75 90 um and then i mean really he's been shit from that so yeah i don't i uh, i still don't really understand why so many people brought reed marnie in i guess the first two games like yeah he looked pretty on fire but um yeah at 70 against south the week before but yeah, he's just got... For a dummy heart. I mean, I guess Green... <laughs> I can't say too much. Green got fucking 31. So Marnie did outscore him this week. So I can't be too... I can't be too um 
angry at Marnie. Um, Rob's, I mean, Rob, Robson 38. All the <laughs> Jesus, it was a bad, it was a bad week for dummy halves apparently. Uh, but Robson again, he's had no real break. I mean, against so he's had a couple of high ones, 74, 74, and an 85. But yeah, 45, 40, 56, 38. He's just been yeah. I mean, yeah, he's played 80 in every game too. That's crazy. How did he score 38 points? I mean, I guess that game was really stop-start. A lot of errors. Um, that's wild, though. 38 points. I get, again, a Grant... <laughs> I keep saying it's so low, but Grant fucking got 31. So, <laughs> shut the hell up. Um, but yeah, Wade Egan there. Tommy Starling. Yeah, he's just not getting the minutes still. Jerry Marshall King. The guy I was talking about. 72. He's averaging almost 70. I think there was one game here where he got a low score as well. Um... That 33... Ah, no. I thought that was a game he got injured, like, earlier. But, no, nah, he's played... So, pretty much... Yeah, he started playing 80 minutes. He started only playing the 72 and the 70. But, uh, 80, 80, and then 79. For whatever reason, he didn't play a minute. <laughs> I don't know if... I don't know if that's a mistake or not. Um, when the hell did he not... Why did he not play a minute of, of action? I'm not sure. That's a weird one. Um, but... But, yeah, honestly, I mean... It, it's a bit of a shame he's so expensive now. I mean, he started... Yeah, his price has pretty much stayed the same. He started well because he, he played really well last year for the for the Doggies. So, they do have an okay draw as well. I mean, Gold Coast, Canberra, and then Sharks. I mean, hopefully... You know, honestly, if he... If he you know, with the Dolphins' injury woes at the moment, hopefully he has a couple of low scores in him over the next four weeks. He'd be an okay trade-in for that round 13 against the Dragons, and he's got Warriors, Manly. Um, maybe, maybe he could be the one. I, I'm not really too keen on anyone else. I mean, Happy, <laughs> Happy Coruscant. Oh, man. I, I, <laughs> his price is getting really juicy, but I just I, I just have not seen enough. Um, he did get his highest score last week. He got 79. He, he played the full 80. I mean, the games, yeah, he's played... The minutes have been all over the shop. He obviously came back a little bit underdone. 68 minutes, he got 60, 80, 80. 54 minutes against the Bronx for whatever reason. Uh, and then 80 minutes there. Yeah, I just haven't seen enough from Appy. He's just, yeah, not, not looking at his best at the minutes. I mean, Brandon Smith... Oh, Brandon Smith. I, I wouldn't be bringing him in again. I mean, I don't know. Maybe. Like, but he got 60 points. He scored a try with a line break. Like, he's just... I just don't see Brandon Smith really breaking out. Like, just the way he's playing. Because he played 63 minutes. He got a try and a line break. Usually, he's going to score 40 points. 40, 50 points. Which is fine. But the price... Yeah. It's fine, but... Tanner Boy is doing the job. Um, but if we look at the... Let's look at the cheapies. So, obviously, a couple of guys to, I guess, to consider. Um, uh, I mean, Cody Nicarima. <laughs> Nicarima playing, playing halfback. I mean, honestly, I love, I love Cody Nicarima at halfback. I, I think he is... I think he's so underrated as a player. Obviously, his form since leaving the Broncos has dwindled. But, man, he had some good seasons as halfback. And I feel like that is his spot. So, I, I don't know. I mean, I actually thought... I thought he would have scored more than that. But, I don't know. He, honestly, he's a wait and see. Because I, I do like Nick Rima. He's got some upside in him. And, again, if he, if he stays low, I think he could do worse than maybe getting a little bit of cash grab on Nikarima for that round 13. Get out Tanner Boyd? Eh, maybe. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Give him another week or two to see if he improves. But, uh, I mean, he's a juicy price. 230k? I mean, if you're sort of weighing up like him or... I mean, Brendan Hands, obviously, he got 50 points, basically, in 80 minutes. But he's not going to get 80 minutes every week um, because Hodgson is going to be the starting dummy half. So... Uh, I don't know. I'd probably rather Nick Arima over a Brennan Hands. 
Jake Granville, I know people people were going crazy about potentially Jake Granville, but the team list, he was actually named on the bench again this week. He, he did start a prop back in, back in last week, but he has been demoted back to the bench, so I would not be going Jake Granville. Um, I guess that's the other thing I'll, I'll talk about, like team list as well. There's been a couple of... Uh, Interesting uh, announcements. <laughs> I, I, can't, I, I can't believe I completely forgot about that, but uh, we'll go through that. Uh, but yeah, Sonny Luke was the other guy I was going to look at. So yeah, 21 points again. Like, he's just so... He's so up and down. Like, this is why I was never really that keen on Sonny Luke um, at the start of the year. And he's just been... I mean, obviously, there was a concussion, a couple of concussions thrown in there. But yeah, he's just been... God, he's been up and down. I mean, he got 59 in 25 minutes. Then he got 29 in 46 minutes. And then this is the game he got concussed. Then he got like 60 points in, in 53 minutes. Everyone was like, whew, Sonny Luke, get on Sonny Luke. And then he played 35 minutes for only 21 points. So I just, I don't know. Again, like if you're a cheap hooker, like I, I'd probably rather Cody Nicarima than a fucking Sonny Luke. I just... I feel like Cody Nakarima potentially has some big games in him. Um, Sonny Luke is just so... The minutes are just never really going to be that high. So even if he has, like, the game... Like, last week, he was involved in everything at the back end. And he played 50 minutes, but still only 60 points. So I just, I just don't see really the, the upside and too much money made from him. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean... Honestly, someone like a fucking Mitch Kenny, like, I, I don't know, Mitch Kenny, he's been okay. He's getting pretty big minutes, I think. Like, what, what has he been getting? So, God, that is, <laughs> that is atrocious. Oh my God. Like, you, you'd look at these minutes at a 300k hooker and you'd be like, this is an absolute must have. But his scores are fucking awful. I mean, he started okay. 68 minutes, 45. 40 minutes, 42. And then 80 minutes, well, 82. 38 points. 58 minutes, 19. 52 minutes, 22. And then 81 minutes again, 55. I mean, that's okay. 55 points in 80 minutes. You take it. But, jeez. His PPM is just fucking dog. <laughs> it's so bad. Um, but yeah, honestly, out of all these guys, I'm probably Kony Nikarima. I'll, I'll have a little bit of a look-see on Nikarima, see how he's going um, as a potential buy coverage downgrade option for, for a Tanner Boyd, maybe. Um, but we'll see. Because Tanner Boyd, he doesn't play 13, but does he play... Oh, he doesn't even play 16. Um, that's a bit of a bugger, isn't it? Yeah, no Titans in the other the other ma Is that the wait? Which ones are the major ones? So thirteen, thirteen, sixteen, and nineteen. So he doesn't play nine. Oh no, he does. He does play nineteen. But the Dolph So the Dolphins play two of the three major ones. Paramount to play three of the three. I'll probably have a closer look. I'll, I'll, I'll probably do another video discussing like the major buys and, and what teams to target and that's in another video because it'll take too long to really um, worry about that one too much. But that, that's that's an interesting um, point as well. So yeah, I'll make another video actually going through that a little bit closer. So yeah, uh, front row forwards. So Tarpany is staying. Uta Kamano and Christian Welsh are definitely on the chopping block. I mean, Franklin Palais, I mean, <laughs> uh, you know, at the end of the day, there's no one really to go to, so he's he's just there. Um, but I think the guy I'm most keen on is Tohu Harris. Uh, you know, we'll keep an eye on anyone else coming up. I mean, I know I talked about Mitch Barnett when he comes back from injury. Uh, could be a, a decent, cheaper option. Um Again, I mean, again, we'll we'll uh, we'll have a quick look at round thirteen. So, Dolphins, you know, Tommy Gilbert, but he'll I, I'd imagine will get picked for Origin. Dragons, there's no one really there. Parramatta, um, front row forwards, not really. I mean, again, if Hopgood was a front row dual second row, I 100% would have kept him instead of selling him. But only second row forward, not that appealing. Cowboys, no one. 
Potter will play Origin, so no one there. Warriors, like I said, Barnett, Tohu Harris potentially. I mean, Tohu Harris definitely, and then Barnett maybe. Broncos... I mean, Payne Haas is the absolute must-have, but <laughs> at this point, at this point, I'm just, I'm just not going to get Payne Haas. Uh, South, I mean, a Jai Arrow, but yeah, I don't know. Jai Arrow probably, I don't know, probably won't make Origin. Like, I'd probably, even though he hasn't played many games this year, I'd probably still have Jai Arrow in the, in the team somewhere, but he probably will miss out because the, the Queensland have so many decent forwards this year. Uh, the Jai Arrow is a, is a guy to um, keep an eye on. Uh, Canberra, you know, Tarpany, Newcastle, Manly. No one no one really too exciting there. Uh, second row forwards. So, Fafida, I'm, I'm just going to hold Fafida over the origin. I mean, 100% he gets picked. If he doesn't, I will be shocked. Um, but I think Fafida is just a hold. Hosking... I mean, a Hosking's a hold for sure and until they get their full strength back and if he drops minutes, if he does. Jacob Preston, he did... I, again, I'm not too sure what happened, but he obviously didn't play the full 80 last week. So he... Preston is, all, uh, I guess, a wait and see. Like, he doesn't... The dogs don't cover round 13 anyway. So, you know, if Preston this week doesn't play the full 80 again... Because they do have... Um, uh, Davey on the bench and I think another potential back row on the bench that I'm not actually I, I, I don't even really remember who slotted into the second row when Preston went off but um, yeah I think he's a wait and see like if he doesn't play full 80 this week I actually think getting rid of him is probably the the, the smart decision because I think the dogs you know he's definitely peaked he could still get the odd try here and there. Like, he looks so likely that it's going to be hard to sell him. But if, if he's not playing f the full 80, I think I think it's time to probably cash in. Um, so, Schuster, he actually plays around 13, which is very nice. Jackson Ford plays around 13. So, I think I'm just going to I'm just gonna hold the, the Jackson Ford uh, uh, play there. If he gets 40s. He might drop a little bit of cash, but he's not going to go too much under like 400k. So I'm not too concerned. Bryce Cartwright. So the one of the big uh, selection outcomes, which I did say, which I did say in the last video might happen, but also it's it's so annoying because this is what happened last week. So Cartwright has been named at starting second row. Madison is lock again, and um. Yeah, 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 that's what happened. Yeah, Madison played in the back row. But yeah, Madison's gone back to lock and Hopgood is back to the bench. So, uh, at, the, <laughs> at least, at least, uh, if we go back here, Parramatta play in the second game on the Friday. Well, the, the, the first game on Friday, but the second game of the round. So, that's very nice. So, <laughs> I'll, I'll know if Cartwright is um, obviously starting or not uh, early. At the moment, I'm not even playing him in my reserves regardless. And I think even if he... I think even if he's named on the bench, I'm probably just going to hold him again this week. I know he might drop... He'll he'll drop more cash if he comes off the bench. But again, he's not going to leak that much cash. And I think there's, there's another trade that I'm probably... Well, actually... Actually, actually... I might not have to do that. So, I... I completely forgot but i'll talk about that in a second but cartwright yeah it's a wait and see <laughs> it's so annoying like i i wouldn't be shocked again like like i said it happened the exact same last week cartwright was named i mean the, the same team was named but then the late change was that hopgood started madison went to the edge and uh cartwright went to the bench now why would they do that i have no idea it fucking it's so annoying <laughs> Like, I honestly, I honestly don't understand why coaches do this. Like, is, is, is changing a, a forward position really that big a tactical change that's going to upset the opposition? Like, surely not. Like, it just, it just annoys, it just annoys us fans, man. Like, what are you doing to us? But uh, we'll see. I mean, if Cartwright gets, if he actually does start it, a back row and again like i feel like he's been really good in the back row outside of moses so i i hope he stays there 
and if he does like 100 percent, i'm just going to keep him for for round 13 because i yeah i think he's i think he's a good play every week really um but if not i still think well actually no no i i totally forgot but um I, we probably will trade Cartwright if he does drop back to the bench. Um, and there's a nice little uh, nice little play we can do. Uh, so the halves, the halves are obviously set. Hines and Cleary, you're not going to swing from that decision. Even over Origin. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you trade out one of them for someone. But, like, again, who... I, I mean, I guess, I, honestly, Mitchell Moses, like, I, I I wouldn't hate the shout of trading in Moses over Origin because, again, Parramatta are going to have a really good team still because, th- like, they have a really good team on paper that not many actually play Origin. There might be a few forwards gone, but not a whole lot. Their, their spine will be pretty set. Um, and... And they play all three major buys. So, you know, I don't know. Cleary or, or Hines, you'd probably... Eh, I don't know. You, I guess depending the prices of them and whatnot. But I, I honestly, that's that's sort of what I'm leaning towards now. Because anyone else... I mean, I guess Sean Johnson maybe. Uh, but nah, I think I think Moses has the upside potential. And uh, not... Yeah, no no one really else that uh, that would leap out. But yeah, getting, getting in that, I don't hate... The five eights. I mean, ideally, well, I guess there's a couple of things. One, either, <coughs> excuse me, um, either Katoa we swing off to a a more genuine five eight option. So again, looking at round thirteen, obviously the 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 standout is Cody Walker at the moment. He is very expensive, so <laughs> hopefully he has a couple of shockers and drops in cash. Um, there's no one really else. I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't think there's anyone else because worry. I mean, Dylan Walker's playing five eight at the moment, but I think he's only, <laughs> I think he's centre. No, what is he? Second row forward. I think Dylan Walker. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't think that. Uh, and then yeah, there's no one, there's no one really else. I mean, I guess Ponga, but if Pong is fit, I mean, he's definitely gonna make Queensland. So yeah. It's probably Cody Walker or nothing. The other option is swinging Schuster down to 5'8", which is probably what I was thinking anyway, and then trading Katoa for a back row uh, forward, which probably makes more sense anyway. But uh, again, we'll, we'll we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Uh, the center wing, so Lockie Miller, he plays in round 13. So, I mean, I, I do think Miller is going to drop a fair bit of cash because they do have a tough draw. And, you know, I, he wasn't going to keep up 70 plus every every week. It just wasn't going to happen. But I still think I'll keep him for round 13. Ruben Garrick is going to stay in the team long term. Val Holmes is definitely a guy that's probably going to go um, before Origin. Well, not probably. I think definitely going to go before Origin because there are some genuine plays in round 13 in the center wing department. Taruva, I'm just so up in the air about Taruva. Um, I don't know. I just don't know. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I just want to see some big scores from him. I just want the faith rewarded because I feel like this. he's so close to going big with the base stats and the potential upside, but it just doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. Um, so, Warbrick. I was looking before and Warbrick's uh, break even is like 40, I think it was. Uh, the, not, uh, the Storm play, Storm play the Warriors at Amy Park. So that's a, it's a pretty good matchup for, for Warbrick. I, I, I'm probably, I'm not going to play him. I, I think, no, I don't know. Do I play Taruva? <laughs> I feel like I just got to keep playing Taruva. Um, actually, no, I might not because there, there's a trade I'm probably going to make, um, so that's probably not going to happen. Um, but yeah, Warbrick, I think you can keep another week. I, like, I traded Khan Pereira for Garrick. Um, and I traded... Uh, who else did I trade? Oh, Kiraz. So I, I traded Kiraz and uh, Khan Pereira for Dunster at the moment, who I'm not sold on, and Garrick. So Dunster... I, I don't like Dunster. I mean, I feel like his scores are fucking awful. <laughs> I mean, the Eels do have a good run coming up, but 
for one, I, I wouldn't be shocked if Dunster gets dropped. So I just, I don't know. Dunster, uh, we'll, <laughs> I think there's, I don't know. We'll, we'll have another look at that in a second. But I, I've just got him in for now because he, we are down. I'm definitely downgrading to a cheapie, but they're just so... Oh, they're so up in the air. And obviously, Gerald Skelton did not get named. Declan Casey. So, this is annoying. Declan Casey got named on the wing. And for whatever reason, he's just fullback in Supercoach. Which is very strange to me because I, I could have sworn Declan Casey has played a few games in centre and on the wing for the Dogs in the last couple of years. So, I don't... I really don't understand why he's just fullback. But, yeah, that, that's quite... That's quite annoying. Um... But yeah, that, that's, sort of, that's sort of what we're leaning at the moment. But the thing I just sort of thought about was if Cartwright does get named back onto the bench, we can just trade him out for a center wing and swing Connolly Lemuelu up to second row forward. Now, Connolly, I do think, has got to go pretty soon as well. I mean, unless if he starts getting some attacking stats and he's, you know, he start making some cash again, then we can hold him to potentially round 13, uh, pending on team list. But as he is just getting 40s at the moment, he probably does have to go pretty soon. But it's just so nice having a, a dual secondary forward and center wing that, yeah, if, if Cartwright goes to the bench again, we can just do that trade. And the big trade that everybody's going to make is Joey Manu. <laughs> so Manu... Um, I talked about Manu in the last video. This was before he got named at fucking 5'8". I, I, I really don't understand the dropping of Sam Walker. Now, Sam Walker has had a couple of shocking games, granted. But I feel like Luke Keery has really not been that much better. And they've dropped the halfback. And now switched Keery to halfback and Manu to 5'8". Why would they not drop Kiri and bring Manu in at halfback with Sam Walker? I, I don't know. I don't I don't really get it. Um I think it's a strange decision all round because Manu, like <laughs> I know Ma Manu can score really well at 5'8, but I don't necessarily think he's that good for the team at 5'8. Like he's just such a ball hog. Like I don't <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. It's a strange decision, but I <sighs> I do think, I do think Manu is the play. Like the the thing about it is that Manu, I was I was definitely looking at probably getting Manu in anyway to cover buys, and he would probably play fullback when Tedesco's out, this and that. Um, he will, he would have probably dropped cash, but the fact is now he's playing five eight. He might only play there a week, maybe two, but the potential upside is massive. Like he definitely will. Like, he's not guaranteed to score well because he's looked bad. Like, I, I said this in the last video, he's just not looking that good. But shifting into 5'8", he's just going to get his hands on the footy so much that he's probably going to score really well. Um, so I think, I, I do think he's the option. And we probably are going to use another trade boost, which I don't necessarily love, but I think it is probably the right decision. Um... If Cartwright does, so this is the thing. If Cartwright does maintain the the starting spot, um, am I going to? Who am I going to trade out then? Probably, I probably still would trade out Lemuelu. I think because, um, well, that's a, I'm I'm still I'm still tossing in Tony, but actually bringing Manu in because I I just. I mean, it would be nice. My center wing would be really, really strong at that point. And I, I do think Manu is going to be like a keeper um, at some point. And even if he goes back to center and goes poorly, you can just leave him on your reserves and then play on matchups. Um, so I don't hate it. But let's... Actually, I'm, I'm, I was actually curious to see how Hopgood went last week as well. I think I looked at this last time. Okay, yeah, he got 61... I'm pretty sure I did look at this last video, but how many minutes did he play uh, starting? Um, okay, he played, he played 70 minutes, so he definitely his minutes did increase, but only the 61 still. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, it is what it is. But, yeah, if we look at... So, if we trade out Connolly, Lemuelu... Again, this is, this is dictating on the fact that... Um, what's his name, Cartwright starts, if Cartwright doesn't start, he goes back to the bench, I'll just 
trade out Cartwright. Um, but if you look, I mean, there's a couple other options. I, I guess Will Penasini plays for the Eels. He's going to play the buys, but yeah, I'd, I'd rather... I would rather... Um, uh, what's his face? Manu. So, I mean, he's, he's been bad. He's gonna, I think his break even is like a tick over a hundred, so he could lose a lot more cash, but he also might not. <laughs> That's the thing. And if we bring in, so if we bring in Manu, right, as our trade boost, we have 67,000, which means potentially Dunster, we could trade him for jared croker instead just got but the the thing about croker right and i again i talked about this in the last video croker they have the buy this week and next week xavier savage will be back at fullback sebastian chris it like sebastian chris and and tomoko are definitely better centers at the moment or just yeah they're just better centers than jared croker is so I don't know what they're going to do. Like, I wouldn't be shocked if Croker just gets dropped next week because Chris will be going back to the centers. I know Nick Kotrick now has a hamstring injury, so maybe Chris goes to the wing. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Um, the other fact, I mean, I guess Robert Jennings? Robert Jennings would also be an okay one, but the... Again, I, it'd be nice if I could wait a week, but I, I can't wait a week on Robert Jennings. I'd have to go early, but he would cover round 13. Potentially can score okay. Um, probably not the best, but maybe. Uh, the other guy that we were talking about, Gerald Skelton. Now, he might play because him, um, him and another guy were actually taking out a New Zealand's Cup this week so they're in the extended squad for the dogs um and i think avarillo was named this week so potentially avarillo drops out or maybe they they switch things around and skeleton does make his debut honestly if late mail comes out that skeleton is going to make his debut i think i'll just take the punt on skeleton i mean if he if he plays one game and then gets dropped for whatever reason then you know it is what it is uh, he'll be a he'll be an AE, I guess. But I think I think it's probably worth it because I just don't <laughs> I just don't have faith in Dunster keeping his spot. And also the scoring is so bad that like is it really worth it anyway? Uh, obviously, you can score two tries, get eighty plus, you'd be laughing. But uh, I think keep an eye on Skelton if he gets tipped to come in. Um, also, Dunster. If you're trading in Dunster, I don't. I still think Dunster is not a bad pickup if you need the money, um, which I do. But keep keep an eye on late mail because Bailey Simonson. I think Simonson is on the extended bench, so I wouldn't be shocked if he just comes straight back in this week for Dunster. Uh, so keep an eye on that. And then I guess, uh, yeah, there's no one really else. So. Yeah, um, I got a few things to to make sure I remember before <laughs> before lockout. But as it stands right now, we're, we're sitting we're sitting okay. And what I'm thinking for reserves, so obviously Reese Walsh is a lock, uh, Nathan Cleary lock, and um, honestly, I think Schuster is is a lock as as a reserve this week. I just think the upside potential. I mean, he could stink it up, but they're taking on the Tigers. Manly have pretty much their full strength team on paper. I mean, Tommy Jaboyevic, their forwards are going well. Like, it's just, you know, he has the upside to go big. I, I, I'm pretty I'm pretty locked into Schuster. If he stinks it up, whatever. I mean, I have, I've had stinkers every damn week, dude. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Um, and then the four, fourth reserve, I mean, there's options. We've got Tanner Boyd for a safe 40-50. I mean, if Cartwright does keep the starting, well... Well, this is the thing, right? <laughs> I'm probably bringing in Manu. So Manu definitely gets a reserve over Lemuelu or Cartwright. So yeah, I guess that's that's pretty much it. It'll be it'll be Schuster, Cleary, Walsh, and then I think just Manu. <laughs> I think I am just going to bring in Manu. I, I just uh, I think it's too good to it's too good to pass up, and I. I I'm curious. What do, what do you... I don't think I saw 
what is his ownership at the moment? Because I think, I, I don't know. Like, I know a lot of people are talking about bringing in Manu. And obviously, with Kiraz being out, it's like, it's such an easy downgrade option to go Manu. But, yeah, 3%, I... I that's definitely going to increase. But I, if it stays low, he could be a really nice pot as well. But, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I do think it's a bit too good to pass up. Um, so, yeah, that's where we sit uh, at the moment. So, we'll, we'll talk about Captain Vice, Captain CC here. So, I, there's a couple of... Well, I think there's only one real option. So... Obviously, the choice every week is going to be Cleary or Hines. And this week, I mean, Pan <laughs> I actually think Panthers could do a number on the Rabbitohs because they just they just like beating the, the Rabbitohs, really. I, it's going to be a grudge match, and I, I just feel like the, the Panthers are going to be up for it. But the Rabbitohs should be as well, and potentially they could they could give it to them. Um, so I can't, I can't go Cleary. And Hines, I mean, Sharks is taking on Bulldogs. So you can't, you can't not go Hines. So Cleary, he could kill it against the Rabbits, but you just you just can't pass up the, the Hines versus the, the half-strength Bulldogs. Like, it's just too good. The other decision, though, is do you, captain, do you just straight Captain Hines or do you Vice Captain? So at the moment, I've got Vice Captain on Hines and Captain on Trebojevic, or I'd go Garrick. And now this is also a tough decision. So Garrick, I mean, the, I feel like the fact is if, if Trebojevic kills it, then Garrick just in turn kills it and he's going to have the goal kicking. So I, oh, it's it's a tough one. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I don't know who I'd go out of those two. But if you're looking at Vice Captain... Um, you got to look at who you're going to drop. Now, for me, it actually works okay because I'm playing Utakamanu. So, you know, it's pretty easy just to drop Utakamanu. He'll probably score like 40 points. So, you know, at the end of the day, that could be one of my lower scores anyway. So going vice captain on uh, Hines, if he goes big, doing the loophole will honestly work pretty smoothly, in my opinion. Um, the only probably bad score potentially is a Katoa or Hayes Dunster. Um, so that's why, <laughs> that's why not having Dunster might be nice because if he goes absolutely shocking again, uh, I could screw the AE. But at the end of the day, I think that's what I'm leaning towards. Um, I just don't think there's any other captaincy options. I mean, I, <laughs> I guess if you're bringing in fucking Joey Manu, do you captain... <laughs> <laughs> to your captain Joey Manu, like I'm, I'm talking Manu up as like potentially scoring massive against the Dragons at five eight. Do you go? Do you go Manu? I didn't. Even, I, I didn't even really think about that, but yeah, potentially. I just, I don't think I could do it just because Manu, he just looked bad. Like the Roosters are not clicking, and Manu just, I don't know. He just doesn't look fully fit to me. So I just, I don't think I could take that punt on on captaining Manu. Um, I think I just... I'm also scared of Captain Trebojevic, though, because he, he just... He looks like he can get injured at any point. But, uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll decide at the end here. Well, uh, before lockout. But, uh, yeah, a couple of things I've got to decide on. What happens with Cartwright, Lemuelu, um, and Dunster? Who, who do we actually go as the cheapie there? But, uh, overall, we're, we're shaping up okay. We're shaping up okay for round 13. And like I said, I'll do another video going through the buys um, and actually what players I think to target for those uh, games. But, uh, yeah, hopefully you guys are enjoying the series. Make sure to like and comment, and I'll see you in the next one.